you want to learn how to fight Pace Setter. Whether you're fresh out of DDL Kudos, fought him once for the task and then never again, or have fought him a hundred times, I aim to teach you how to fight Graham, and if that's not what you're here for, hopefully you'll learn some new stuff to help you get better, even if you're already a pro. This video will be broken up into five categories. Story slash task line, basics, cheats, how to pick gags, and more strategies and tips. We will start with story slash task line. Pace Setter is the Drowsy Dreamland Kudos Manager boss fight. You must be rank 9 with 20 Kudos experience to access the task Give It a Rest. Thankfully, Graham has the simplest Kudos task of them all. Toon HQ informs you that Professor Yon on Lullaby Lane has been filing noise complaints about his next door neighbor and asks you to check it out. You go and talk to Professor Yon and he tells you to go talk some sense into his neighbor. This gives you the task to defeat the pace setter and you can now enter the elevator in Fast Asleep All-Star Suites to do so. Here's the cutscenes for his fight. What an idiot. I love him. After defeating him, you return to Yawn and he tells you that you reek and you need to go take a shower. This part of the task line is known for having special speed chat phrases, including I need to take an all-star shower so badly! WOG! I STINK! And where can I find a shower? Before you take the shower, and I did it, I am now clean, and I knew something was missing from my life after you take the shower. Once you turn in the task, these speed chat phrases are gone, so be sure to keep the task if you want to keep them. As with every other rank 10 kudos task, your reward for completing it is one additional max laugh point. While I'm at it, let's talk about his loot drops. He has three of them, two of which are very rare and one of which is legendary. His drops are his sticker of him pointing and laughing, his glasses, and his guitar as a backpack. Really awesome drops. All of these are some of my most used in the entire game.
starting off with the basics, Pace Setter is a level 66 Cellbot Manager with 12,750 HP. This makes him the highest level cog in the entire game, with the highest HP in the game to back it up. He is also the only manager who does not subject you to content sync at the moment. You go in with whatever laugh and gags you have at that time. As a result, you want to bring your A-game to this boss. You should have all tracks you're taking at absolute bare minimum level 7. Do not bring a gag that is less than maxed unless you absolutely have to because you're the only one who can make your crew's gag composition work. Moving on to his attacks, he has four, all of which are listed here. And with that, let's move on to the sheets. The real meat of this boss is his cheats. It is critical to know every facet of every one of these if you plan on fighting him more than once. One additional cog can be in the fight, making the maximum five. This is pretty standard for managers. At the end of every turn, Graham will increase the battle speed by 0.25 times. This means everything, including battle animations, turn timer, and sound effects. It starts at 1 times speed and stops increasing at 4 times, meaning after 12 rounds. At 4 times speed, you will have 10 seconds to pick your gag. At 5100 health, the pace setter will slam a guitar on the floor and it explodes as the battle timer is increased to 999.9 .9 times speed. In actuality, this is 6 times speed up from the prior maximum of 4 times. This means you have about 6.5 seconds to pick a gag. As a general tip, when Graham slams the guitar on the floor, someone should use a gag up all. Pace Setter chooses a cog, potentially including himself. That cog has all debuffs removed and has an arrow pointing over them, color coded to a gag track. You must use that gag track on that specific cog, or otherwise kill it, otherwise he will inflict hurry sickness on everyone. He can use this cheat on 2 to 3 cogs when he is at lower health. Here are some extremely important side notes for Rush Job. Number 1. Splash damage counts for squirt jobs, meaning you can target a cog next to the jobbed cog and still have it count. Number two, just placing down a trap counts for a trap rush job. You do not have to lure them into it in the same turn. Number three, you still have to squirt on zap rush jobs, otherwise zap will fail and you'll get hurry sickness. Do keep in mind that rush job removes debuffs, so if there is a zap job, someone always has to squirt. Number four, the most important, the gag of the rush job type cannot miss on the cog with the rush job on it unless it's dry zap or lure drop. Graham will begin randomly banning a certain gag level, varying per track, every turn for the rest of the fight. This is used once at 8500 HP, but lasts the rest of the fight. If you pick a banned gag, you are inflicted with hurry sickness. Graham randomizes the order gags are used in. This can cause several problems or benefits to you and your allies, with the most prominent examples being drop coming before or after lure and sound coming before or after lure. If you fail to do a rush job properly or pick a gag band by moving goalposts, Graham will inflict hurry sickness on all tunes or whoever picked the band gag, respectively. Hurry sickness is a 35 damage, perfect accuracy attack that reduces the effectiveness of all gags by 50% for one turn afterward. Additionally, every time Hurry Sickness is used on a tune, they take 10 more damage after the first, stacking infinitely. At the end of every turn, the cog's positions are randomized. This can result in a cog staying in the same place. 
if that was a lot, the general gist of it is he forces you to play Simon Says, randomly bans gags like Stenographer, randomizes the gag order, moves around the cogs every turn, and makes the fight faster every turn. If you do not play by his rules, he makes your gags half effective for a turn and you take damage. If you're wondering how to deal with this, now that I've explained all the cheats, we can get into that. I do have one side note before that, however. If you want an extra challenge, all four tunes should pass for two turns in a row at the very beginning. If you do this, he will immediately enter phase two, meaning the fight will be at six times speed for the entire duration. He still activates other cheats at the appropriate HP, like moving goalposts and content sync. The only other differences are that Hurry Sickness gains 20 damage per time it's used instead of 10, and he can use two rush jobs at once right off the bat. Now on to one of the most important subjects, gags. In my 100 times fighting pace setter, I have learned that the two most critical things in this fight are number one, across all of your group, have two of every gag track. If you do not have at least two of every gag track, your odds of winning goes down by a very considerable amount due to rush jobs. Number two, there are three viable gag builds if you're going in a group with randoms. I will come back to this, however, because first we have to talk about prestige choices. Prestiges are definitely one of the most important choices you can make in this fight. Here is my personal ranking of prestige choices for this fight, and I will give a detailed explanation as to why they're as good as they are. Please note that this is my opinion, and while I am experienced in this fight, you can, and should, experiment to figure out what you like the most. If you run Prestige Zap and it works, it works. You do you. Causes throw to heal yourself, and tune up to heal yourself more. The less frequently you have to use tune up, the better, due to his massive HP pool and constant cog summoning slash attacking. Single-handedly, the best damage option in this fight. Do not overlook Prestige Trap. The fact it does so much damage and can cause drop to hit no matter what the gag order is when luring is phenomenal. Normal trap can also do the latter, but that extra damage adds up real fast. Pre-trapping Gram is also super good in this fight. The 15% Encore bonus in this fight is huge, especially when paired with Prestige Tune-Up, Prestige Throw, or Prestige Trap. Solid damage bump adds up over the course of a fight. Potentially my most controversial opinion, I have really come around on Prestige Squirt in this fight. It is not amazing by any means, but there are many cases where Sound just barely can't kill Cog with a rush job on it. A Prestige Squirt means this will happen significantly less often, as well as being good at keeping Cogs at low HP without killing them, which is usually preferable to killing them. Typically, throw does not come after lure when content sync activates, but this is nice to have if you do. Extremely nice to have before content sync activates. Usable damage bump. Not worth it unless you have several people running it, in which case it's nice, but is it really worth having three or four of? Probably not. I want to stress, you do not need to follow my advice word for word. If you don't want to take Prestige Tune-Up and opt for something else, go ahead. I'm guilty of that frequently myself. These are just the best options under most circumstances, in my opinion. With all that out of the way, let's discuss the three common builds, pros and cons for this fight. They are all simple, and I will provide a brief summary of all three. 8 and 0. You don't trust your teammates, or you just want to be reliable. The generalist approach. Probably don't want more of two of these in the same fight, but you can still manage with all four of them if you really want. 7-2. You take two prestiges, probably tune up and throw, or throw and sound if you're tune up -less. This gives you reliable healing and or damage, depending on what you take. 6-4. Skip two tracks to get the best of both worlds. 
Likely prestige throw, sound, tune up, and trap, though lure and drop aren't bad choices either. Only downside is that you either have to build around others, or others build around you. My personal favorite is 6-4, but I listed the other two because they still work perfectly fine and are better for newcomers. Now how do you decide when to skip a gag trick and when to take it, and not just prestiges? I will go by them one by one and explain. Tune up. Only skip if you already have two or three of them. Some people might be uncomfortable with two tune-up lists, but it's totally manageable if you and your crew trust each other. Trap. Very good gag to have, though you can get by with just two, especially if one or both of them is prestiged. Pick at your own discretion. Lure. You only need two people with lure, but more never hurts. Throw. A good idea for all four people to have, but if you need or want to go 7-2 or 6-4, it's okay for one person to skip out on it. Squirt. You only really need two, though more never hurts. The same applies to Zap. Sound. Important for all four people to have. While you can manage with three or even two, being unable to four fog or opera at crucial moments will force you to have to find an often much more convoluted solution to the problem. Being able to flat out kill cogs with rush jobs on them sometimes is extremely important. Only don't take if you are utterly and truly confident in you and your teammates. Drop. Like throw, a good idea for all four people to have, though you can get by with three or even two. Although if your team doesn't all have throw and doesn't all have drop, you probably want one or the other to be universal amongst you. And perhaps the second most important thing to having two of every gag track, do not go squirtless and zapless. You can go squirtless or zapless, but if you go both, it is effectively greening. I do not say that lightly, you are an active hindrance to your team if you go squirtless AND zapless. Being unable to participate in zap rush jobs at all makes impossible rush jobs significantly more frequent when he starts doing 2-3 to three rush jobs. I think the most important thing to let everyone know about that I haven't already, and the thing that has cost me more runs from others doing it, is do not be a mindless tune-up bot or lure bot. When he starts doing 2-3 to three rush jobs per turn, there will come a time where all four people need to participate in a rush job or it's impossible, and if you're luring or tune-upping when this is happening and you lose, you are the reason why you lost. Now, on to the final part of the video, more strategies and tips. Here's several short but important things to know about the fight. Number 1. Cogs that have a rush job on them cannot be fired. They can be sued though. Only sue them if all jobs are being fulfilled and they're a high level cog that can't be lured or killed that turn. Number 2. Related to the prior point, it's a good idea to fire very high level executive cogs, especially executive barristers and 17 executives of any type. Fun fact, 15 executive barristers do more damage than Graham. Number 3. Although very rare, sometimes you will get a truly impossible set of rush jobs. If this happens and you can't just kill the cogs with rush jobs on them, simply try to minimize the amount of damage you'll take that turn by luring and tune up if anyone is less than max laugh. One missed rush job does the same damage as three. Number 4. While tune-up unites are not mandatory, you should only enter the pace setter fight if you have them or your crew explicitly states they're okay with you not having any. Don't be that guy. Number 5. As stated earlier, trap rush jobs do not need to be lured for them to count. Simply placing the trap down counts. Sometimes it's better to leave the trap there for a turn, such as if there's three rush jobs that require four people to perform. Number 6. If somebody goes sad and you can't kill Graham in that same turn, unless you get insanely lucky with rush jobs and or he's already extremely low, you cannot win. Restart. Number 7. As a result of moving goalposts, someone who picks a banned gag will have a higher hurry sickness damage total than everyone else. 
take this into consideration when you are thinking about uniting. Number 8. It is better to unite early than not unite at all and watch as someone goes sad to something you could barely react to. Better safe than sorry. Number 9. It is wise to designate someone to use a gag up all at the beginning of phase 2 when he slams the guitar on the floor. If that person is on cooldown, figure out who's using it quickly. Number 10. A lure rush job means that group lure will be guaranteed to hit. Number 11. Zap rush jobs give guaranteed squirt accuracy on this cog that is affected by rush job. Number 12. Trap is the only gag that guarantees a drop will hit if a drop comes after lure in the gag order. If you really need to group lure but drop comes after lure, someone should trap the cog as well. Even marbles work perfectly fine for this purpose. And finally, tip number 13. If there is a drop rush job, unless the cog is eating dazed or soaked before the drop goes off, only use one drop. The first drop is guaranteed to hit, but the ones after it aren't, and since the stronger gags come later, this means that if you're using two different levels of gags for the drop, such as a boulder and a piano, the piano is likely to miss. As always, I hope this guide has helped you. I learned all of this through playing the boss myself. A lot. I am not perfect, so my strategies might not work for you as they do for me. A lot of this boss, especially if you're not naturally good at it, just comes from practice. Practice at being fast enough and not panicking. It took me well over 20 tries before I beat him for the first time because I wasn't naturally good at it. Now I have 100 wins against him, and he's my favorite manager fight by far. Thank you very much for watching, and the next guide will be on the Chainsaw Consultant. Special thanks to... all of these people. They helped me get footage and are in this video. I'll see you next time.